Shine, brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric shavers made. Presenting the new Sunbeam Rollmaster Shaver, the only electric shaver with automatic self-adjusting rollers that automatically adjust to your face and beard. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I know that you're going to be very happy to hear that sitting next to me, as I'm very happy to have him, is a splendid actor who is now being seen in a picture that's a great hit all around the country, The House on Haunted Hill, Mr. Vincent Price. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you a very dear friend of mine, Arlene Francis, the star of Once More with Feeling, Arlene Francis. And now, as many of you know, this is National Library Week. And so at great expense to the management, we are bringing you a gentleman tonight who is terribly good in almost all the rooms of the house, but as one of the leading publishers in the United States, very influential in the library, Mr. Bennett Cerf. I'm glad you mentioned librarians, Arlene, because they do do a wonderful job in this country. Like the teachers, they're terribly underpaid. <laughs> and now I'd like to introduce our distinguished master of ceremonies, always loquacious but never flatulent, Mr. John Charles Davis. Oh, wow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have some very interesting occupations tonight of a type and character which I'm sure will give the good folks in the panel a rough time. At least we hope that's true. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll have our first contestant in just... <laughs> in this intemperate weather, let us be temperate and ask our first contestant to come in and sign in, please. Samuel R. Pierce, Jr. Right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Pierce, where are you from? New York City. New York City. Then I think none here will be strangers to you. Our panel, Mr. Pierce. Thank you. And will you join me over here, please, sir? <laughs> Tell me, are you familiar with the way we keep score, Mr. Pierce? Yes, I am. In that event, let's let the folks at home and our friends who have been good enough to brave the tempest tonight and come to the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we'll give you your usual bit of help, which is to tell you that uh, Mr. Pierce is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning at the end of the line with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Pierce, you're very good looking. Uh, may I assume, because they like to fool us here, that you have nothing to do with the theater or motion pictures? That's true. I have nothing to do with either of them. Uh, do you work indoors more than outdoors? Yes. Uh, would you consider yourself either an executive or a professional? Yes. Is it professional? Yes. Does what you do require a degree? Yes. Do you have any title other than Mr.? Yes. Heavens. <laughs> Is it doctor? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Price. Well, uh, does uh, the service you perform have to do with teaching? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you work for a nonprofit making organization? Yes. Uh, would it be uh, some branch of our government? Yes. Does it have anything to do with the armed services? No. 
Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Pierce, may I assume that you are not elected to the office that you hold? No. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, we've got to have a small... If you are elected, I get a no. All right, yes. Uh, does the job that you do have anything to do, whatever, with the security of the United States? Well, yes, somewhat, yes. But I would warn you here, Bennett, that this is a question which we would find uh, it very difficult to give a no to, because almost any activity in the level of government which we have ascertained Mr. Pierce operates in has something to do with security by an extension of just pure logic. Well, just to get uh, through that uh, morass of words, Mr. Pierce, <laughs> would you say that your work would be more closely allied with the, the United Nations than the Defense Department? That's no. a very good question, Bennett. Four down and six to go, Mr. <laughs> Gallup. Is there anything advisory about what you do, Mr. Pierce? Yes. Uh, can you do your work in some place other than New York? No. Can I do it, or can it be done? No, Dad, the question was asked. <laughs> no, you, that's my God and five to go, Mr. Price. Uh, Mr. Pierce, I'd like to take account of Wildflyer and ask if it has anything to do with chemistry. No. <laughs> That's a bit wild, Vincent. Boy, the wings sure fell off that one, didn't they? <laughs> Six wow. out of four to go, Miss Fred. Do you have a law degree? Yes. Oh. Uh, would you be a jurist? <laughs> a ju would you be a judge? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, indeed. Can His you... honor. Why would Judge Pierce be closer to defense than to the UN? <laughs> closer to the defense anyway. He has nothing to do with the UN at all, but he has something as a, a jurist to do with the security of the United States because he would have to rule on certain issues of law which had to do with the security of the you United States. You asked the question, you, would, you, you would, got the answer. <laughs> Judge Pierce, do, do you accept that lame explanation? I'll accept the explanation. <laughs> I don't think we have time tonight to go into it. <laughs> I might say that uh, his honor, Samuel R. Pierce, Jr. sits on the Court of General Sessions here in New York. And one thing we thought might trip you up, Bennett, was on your issue of election, because actually Judge Pierce is serving by appointment now to an elective position. He would have, he will run in, I would take it November, wouldn't it, sir? You'd be yes, running? probably, yes. But he is now serving under interim appointment by the governor, and he he's actually sits in a position which normally would be an elective office. And uh, we did better here. We got six down and four to go. We'll throw the rest of them just for fun, because I know you have a good purpose to which you want to put our scoring device here tonight. And we would thank you, Your Honor, for tangling the panel up this much. I'm sorry we didn't make it all the way. Thank you very kindly. And may I say this? I'd like to give this money to the uh, New York Police Athletic League. It's done, sir. <laughs> done. All right, panel, we didn't quite stick you with that one. Perhaps we'll do better this time. Will the next contestant come in and sign in, please? H. H. Whitney, right, sir? Uh, Mr. Whitney, where are you from? Uh, New Rochelle, New York. New Rochelle, oh, fine. And uh, you know the panel, Mr. Whitney? How do you, how do you do, do? Mr. Whitney? You know us now. Now, will you sit over here with me? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Whitney? Yes. Okay, then let's let the folks at home and those who are in the audience know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Mr. Whitney is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning in this instance with uh, Arlene Francis. Uh, Mr. Whitney? Is there a product connected in any way with what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. May we assume, therefore, Mr. Whitney, that you perform a service of some kind? Yes. <clears throat> is this a service that is performed for human beings? Yes. Would it be performed for both sexes? Yes. Equally? Yes. 
Could it be performed for the sexes at the same time? Yes. That's friendly. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> when you perform this service for both sexes, possibly, do they come to you for this? Yes. Do they pay for the privilege? Yes. Uh, could a group of them come at one time? Yes. Are you therefore in some form of the entertainment business? Yes. <laughs> would, this, uh, would this form of entertainment that you perform require any physical dexterity? Yes. <laughs> Might you perform this feat in a circus or carnival? Pardon? I didn't understand. Might you perform this feat that you do in a circus or carnival? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you perform it indoors more often than outdoors? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Price. Do you perform it in the clothes that you are wearing now or in a uniform or costume of some kind? Uh, 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 uh. We we'll take the first half of that question, Vincent. I'm sorry, since you did mention you the clothes you have on now. All Goodbye. Right. That no. makes it four down. <laughs> Six to go, Miss Brett. I'm not very bright. <laughs> Mr. Whitney, would this be considered uh, an occupation that might have something to do with sports? Is there something sporting about it? Uh, yes, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I think, this. If Mr. Whitney is, is uh, willing, we will say that it might so be construed by some. I see. Okay. Mr. Whitney wears something other than what he wears now. Uh, does it cover Mr. Whitney? We... Sh I mean... <laughs> 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 It must be answered in the affirmative, Mr. <laughs> I sure get a yes for that one, eh? <laughs> That's much you more sell hot dogs in nudist colony? <laughs> no, what I really meant, Mr. Whitney, is that unlike it covering you briefly, <laughs> does it cover you longly? <laughs> yeah. Would you just like to from change the question? From stem to stern. From <laughs> stem to stern. <laughs> Would it be considered a coverall? <laughs> I can't get out. Let's all just keep quiet. Unlike a bathing suit, let me put it that way. Is it something unlike a bathing suit? <laughs> <laughs> unlike a bathing suit. Uh huh. Yeah, covers from stem to stern. Would we? <laughs> Would we recognize what you do? if we saw you in this <laughs> costume that you wear while you are pursuing your occupation? Yes. Is it something that women can do, too? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, is it done on land? Yes. Uh, do you move around in this occupation? Yes. Do other people do it at the same time that you are doing it? Yes. It is not a solo performance, therefore. No. Uh, yes, it is not a. Yes, it solo is not a solo performance. Do you use any kind of tool or implement uh, w in your work? Yes. Is it something you hold in your hand? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to ask if it's a yo-yo. If anybody's thinking about it. <laughs> uh, is it? Um, and yet, it's not a sport. Uh, some people might consider it. Yes. Sport. Is it, um... Uh, shall I pass? <laughs> I've been on long enough, haven't I? <laughs> I'll pass. Then it's, uh... Mr. Whitney, could uh, people, if they were so inclined, wager any money on what you were indulging in? No. <laughs> Why not? You... I would say this with your permission, that this is so broad a question that I think it would be presumptuous of us to say that there was no potential or possibility of wager. It is not the it. norm, let's put it that way. It would not be anything like trotting or something where there was professional you are, betting. You, no, I'm saying it is not that, right? Right. Uh, 
Is this a uh, sport that you indulge in in which a team plays rather than an individual? Is this an activity in which a team plays? <coughs> Yeah. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I think, Bennett, we'd have to agree there was a team involved, yes. Is this team sometimes composed of both men and women? <laughs> Your make team, it more lively, I'm sure. Has any of the teams that you've played on been composed of both men and women? No. That's all we need to know. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this a sport or game or occupation which takes place in the United States? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Price. Well, I hardly think that's fair. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have anything to do with um, yes. uh, uh, the, the implement that you use is made of iron or steel? Yes. You know, metal, in other words, I'm sorry, uh, one word, metal. Yes. And uh, is it on the end of a wooden pole? No. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. Seven down and three to go. Let's say any more, Miss Francis. <laughs> Careful, boy. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask anything. Are animals involved in any way with what you do? No. <laughs> Are they involved in any yes. way with what you do? Right. Yes. Ah. Uh, 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 Bullfighter. <laughs> you see, the audience was giving us a little something there, Bennett. You may very well be right. Be. Would you like to Is the animal that you are interested in, or that is interested in you, <laughs> El Toro? <laughs> El Toro. Oh. You are, and I am an aficionado of what you do, boy. And are you a bullfighter? Yes. Yes. Oh. Mr. Harry no. Whitney is Bennett in, got it. In he is a picador, though. No, he's a no. bullfighter. He yeah, is no. uh, a toreador. Huh? No. Matador. 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 I knew Matador. It when I, I got him. this. I'm not uh, very good about this. <laughs> I wow. can tell a matador actually, a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting, I said to Mr. Whitney, whom I met very briefly a few minutes before we came on, when were you in the ring last? He said last Sunday. Where was it? In Guadalajara, Spain. Guadalajara, Guadalajara. in Spain. Yeah. But he has another, actually, the, one reason why we're pleased to have you. You all remember that the press reported uh, something of a Megillah about an advertisement that the, the uh, Cigar Institute in the United States had of a, a yes, chap all done bull, up like course. Madison Avenue with a bull, and the Spaniards said it looked like a cardboard bull, and they were real mad about it. Yes. Well, Harry, being a good American from New Rochelle in New York, sat down and answered this letter, see, and he just gave it to them all the way down the line uh -huh. in, in the newspapers in Madrid, and he's got the, uh, a very uh, good idea, which he's pressing. He says he doesn't think it's seemly and proper that a matador should have flowers thrown to him when he gets his, does yeah. his work well. He says, throw cigars. He likes cigars. Wow. <laughs> if you could train a bull to smoke one, then you'd really have an ad going, wouldn't you? <laughs> or blow smoke in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. You've been a wonderful guest, Mr. Whitney, and thank it's you, nice Mr. to have you with it. Good to see you on What's My Life. And now we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in and sign in, please, Mr. Challenger? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin it all with uh, Bennett Surf. That sounded like a reaction to a masculine personality. Uh, did you have any part, whatever, any active part in the Oscar ceremonies on Monday night? Uh, no. 
One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you now have or have you ever had a hit record? Hmm. C'est possible. What? C'est possible. C'est possible. Mr. Price, that doesn't fool me. Are you a cowboy actor? <laughs> English, please. No. 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 Impossible. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you appearing in New York in either the theater or a picture or a club at the present time? Oui. Mr. Sir. I uh, think I recognize the timbre of that voice. Uh, have you ever had any uh, close association with a damsel? Known as Jezebel. We. Oui. <laughs> I would like to pass. Vincent? Uh, was I ever in here? Oh, I'm crazy. I won't pass. Frankie Lane. <laughs> A wonderful try, though. I was, trying, I was trying to think of an actor who'd played opposite somebody in a picture called Jezebel. Betty Davis. Yeah, I yeah, had the whole thing right. planned, and you had to louse me up with that first question. <laughs> <laughs> About the Oscar, I couldn't answer what I had prepared. <laughs> I heard you last night with Benny Goodman. Wonderful program. Thank yes, you. it was. And is presently, by the way, I At the Copa, you. aren't you? At the Copa, Frank? Yes, dear. But I wanted to ask Vincent, how come he didn't fool you? You knew he was a cowboy singer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just heard the gallop of hooves as he came in. I he, was, he, was, uh, yeah. he was picking a mule train. <laughs> kind of heavy-footed, Frankie. But I just, I've been waiting, Vincent, all the time. Ever since I said, what cowboy singer we got whose French is that good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> proceed, Vincent well. says, you can't fool me. The <laughs> cowboy singer. <laughs> Oh, I thought I had you guys trapped this time. I thought you <laughs> did, too. It was Perry Como. Wasn't Perry Como, yeah. I uh, yeah. wasn't about that. With Oscar Hammerstein's song. Mm. Oh, yeah. what a medley. <clears throat> well, Miss Arlene, since you're at the Copacabana, don't tell me you're going to miss the Desert Inn tournament. Me miss the Desert Inn tournament? I'd never leave. Got to be in Las Vegas Goodness. for that. You know this that. is, I'm sorry, this is an inside joke. The last time I saw Frank, when we had a chance to sit down and have some fun, we were both in Las Vegas at the Desert Inn, where they have a golf tournament. And this is quite a golfer. I'm a duffer, but this is quite a golfer. I'm a duffer. Don't so you'll him. be there. <laughs> yes, we're going to be there. Oh, good. Well, I wish I could get out. I don't think I can. But this I time you're going to miss it. I'm afraid so. Oh, you're going to miss Gene Littler winning again. Yes, Gene Littler's. Uh, <laughs> Gene Littler learned to play golf from Frank. Oh, yes. At least that's the way Frank would like to tell uh, Yes, I'm I just like kidding. Frank. <laughs> well, I hope I can get up, but I don't think I can. But it was good to have you. I thought we had him. I'm very embarrassed about well, this. Well, I am, too, you were... I, I was rehearsing in the control room, and I was rehearsing back here. John, flip the card so we can give the money to Henny Youngman. <laughs> there it is. Not a problem in the world. You give all the money to Henny Youngman. How's that? All right. Good deal? <laughs> Let's give it to him. It's a good Thanks, deal. Thanks, John. Good to see you, Frank. Sorry we didn't get been flipping cards here, but I'm afraid I must admit you did very well tonight, panel. We'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Oh, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John, and I would like in honor of Vincent's being here tonight to say that the last time he was here, I had the pleasure of introducing him as the star of the fly, and I am happy to announce that he has just made the return of the fly. <laughs> and I hope I like it just as much. I'm glad it's coming back. Thank you, and uh, good night to you, too, dear. Good night, Vince. Good night. Good night, good night Bennett. You stop at some library tonight, John, on the way home. Yes, good night. I will. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. This is Hal Sin speaking.